Hey guys, Scott here. In this video, we're going to be looking at choosing a good domain name for your blog. Before we jump into actually choosing what your blog's domain name will be, let's have a brief look at what a domain name is. So basically, a domain name is the link, or called a URL, that is going to be representing your blog, and it'll be something like www.yourblog.com. The domain name for any website you're on can always be found in the address bar for your browser. If you have no idea what niche or topic you want to do for your blog, then you should watch a previous tutorial of mine that helps you decide on a topic for your blog. You cannot choose a good domain name for your blog if you don't know what you're going to be doing your blog about. So it is important to make sure that you know what topic or niche you'll be doing on your blog. Most of you will likely already have a good idea of what you want to do, and so you're ready to choose a domain name for your blog. The most common extension for a domain name is the .com extension, and most of you would have already seen this. A good example here would be Google or YouTube, as their domain names both use the .com extension. Google is google.com and YouTube is youtube.com. However, there are also many other extensions that can be used for a domain name. You can have domain names that use a .org extension. There's also a .net extension. There's .edu, there's .biz. And you can even have country-specific extensions for domain names. For example, in Australia, a country-specific domain name would be .com.au and there's even .net.au and .org.au. Even though there are many other extensions that you can use, the most common extension and most well-known is the .com extension for domain names. Even though pretty much all the good .com domain names are taken, you should still try to get one. .com is the most reputable, and I do recommend that you stick to using the .com for your blog. I've briefly mentioned this, but unfortunately, the .com domain names are running thin. What I mean by this is that most of the good short domain names using the .com extension are taken. Every single day, there are approximately 100,000 domain names registered, and the majority of those are .com domain names. Plus, on top of that, there are already so many million .com domain names registered, and that number is growing very fast. This makes it very hard to find a good short domain name for your blog. However, it doesn't make it impossible. You can still get a good domain name that nicely represents your blog. You'll just have to use slightly longer domain names, which is fine. One of the things to take away from this though, is that when you do know what niche you want to do your blog on, you should waste no time and figure out what domain name you want to use for your blog and register it. Even if you find a domain name available now that would be good for your blog, that doesn't mean that it's going to be available tomorrow. So don't waste any time when you know what you want to use. So now you have a better understanding of domain names, you can start to work at coming up with your own domain name for your blog. Now we know that all good short domain names are most likely taken, so you're going to need to be a little creative in choosing your domain name and maybe make it slightly longer. There are three different ways you can choose the domain name for your blog. You can use either a brand name, a descriptive domain name, or even your own name. It is entirely up to you which method you want to use for getting your domain name. An example of a brand name being used for a domain name is again Google. They use google.com, which is their brand name. An example of a descriptive name is something like gardening tips, as it uses words in the domain name that describe what the actual blog is about. And lastly, you could just use your own name. Personally, I would recommend going with the descriptive name as they better represent what your blog is actually about, and the other two methods are just other options you have. So the most popular method for choosing a domain name for blogs is using the descriptive domain name. For example, if you want a domain name about cats, and in particular ragdoll cats, then you could use something like ragdolltalk.com as your domain name. Or if that's taken, you could actually start to mix in your own name. For example, you could use something like www ragdollswithjenny.com if your name was Jenny. You can see there is a good keyword describing your blog in there, which is ragdolls. And by adding the with Jenny to the domain name, it does um, two things. First, that domain name is very likely to be available. And secondly, it also tells people straight up what your name is. So remember, if you can't find an available domain name using just descriptive words like ragdolltalk.com or something, then you can always add in your own name. Try to choose a domain name that at least has one keyword in it that relates to the topic or niche of your blog. So if your blog was going to be related to cats and ragdoll cats, then www.ragdollswithjenny.com is a great example, as it has a related keyword in the domain name, which is ragdolls. Of course, there is always an exception. 
here if you choose to actually use a domain name as a brand name. However, it's uncommon to use brand names to actually choose the domain names for your blog. Now to cover a few things that will help you in choosing a good domain name for your blog. Search engines like Google do still consider the words used in your domain name when they rank your blog or website in the search engines. However, they do not rate them anywhere near as strong as they used to. Google and other search engines understand that it is getting very hard to find a good related domain name. So they put less focus on the domain names and more focus on what is actually on your website or blog. So basically you don't really need to stress too much about getting the perfect domain name. You wanna find a domain name that will be easy for your visitors to remember as word of mouth can be a great way for your blog to get spread and increase in popularity. So try to keep your domain name as short as possible and don't make it like 10 words long or anything and try to keep it on topic to what your blog is actually about. Domain names cannot contain any spaces. So when you go to register your domain name and get your blog hosting account, remember that you cannot use spaces in your domain name. It won't work. However, instead of using spaces, there are a few special characters you can use in place where you would like to have a space. These are the hyphens and underscores. Both the hyphen and underscore can be, found, can be found on your keyboard right beside the number zero. Now if we look at this image here, this is a standard layout for a keyboard and the number zero here, you can see there's this key here is for hyphens and underscores. If you just press the key on its own, it'll do a hyphen. And if you hold shift and press the key, it'll do an underscore. So you can use underscores and hyphens where you would usually like to have a space in your domain names and that's allowed, but you can't use spaces. And one last point is that domain names are case insensitive, meaning that if you try to register a domain name like mydomain.com, where there is a capital M for my and a capital D for domain, it'll actually get registered in all lowercase. So the capitals won't be counted and they'll actually be converted to lowercase. So you'll end up having just mydomain.com all in lowercase. So basically just don't worry about adding in capitals when you're registering your domain name as they'll get converted to the lowercase anyway. Now let's take a look at actually getting your domain name. So once you've figured out what domain name you want, there's only one last thing you need to decide on. And that is which way you want to register your domain name, since there are actually two different ways you can get your domain name registered. First off, you can register your domain name through a domain registry site, which you will then need to buy website hosting for your blog from another company, and then link your domain name from the registry site where you purchased your domain name to your hosting account with the other company. For 99% of you, that would have just sounded confusing and is why I recommend that you do not do it this way, which brings me on to the second way that you can register your domain name. The second way to register your domain name is to sign up for a website hosting account for your blog with HostGator, which I show you how to do in another tutorial video. And then when you sign up for your hosting account, you simply enter the domain name you want to use for your blog and HostGator will link your domain name to your hosting account for you. So basically all you do is tell them the domain name you want and they do all the technical work in the background. And this is all done pretty much instantly when you sign up. So this is how I recommend that you register your domain name. To learn how to register your domain name with HostGator and get your hosting account for your blog at the same time, you can simply click the link under this video here. The video watching will be here where it says video coming soon and the link will be directly under the video. It'll be an image link, so all you need to do is click the actual image and that'll link you to that tutorial. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description to this tutorial page and there'll also be a link in the description to the tutorial page about getting your domain name and hosting account. So that's all for this video. Good luck and thanks for watching. And if this video helped you and you are watching this on YouTube, then please thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Thanks.